So you've waited all year for your trip down to the Keys. You step outside. And this is what you see. So here's 10 tips for fishing the Florida Keys. Number one, practice what ifs with the weather report. Okay, this is what I'm talking about, how to practice for your Keys fishing trip. Now, if you're unclear of how to do any of this stuff, I have a playlist called Basic Introductory Kayak Fishing in the Florida Keys. And there is this one I would suggest, Basic Introductory Kayak Fishing in the Florida Keys Preparation, Lower Keys Kayak Fishing Internet Fishing Websites, and the Navionics Web App Internet Fishing Research, if you're not familiar with all how to do this prep type stuff that I'm going to go over here. Now the, the way you would, you would do this is go to the uh, windfinder.com, find the, the uh, location of roughly where you're going to be at, roughly where you're going to be fishing, all right? And even though you're going to be here in a year, six months, a month, a week from now, it all works the same. This is just practice to prep you for your actual fishing trip. You're going to just bring up the forecast for that area and you're going to pick a day, all right? So let's say we're going to pick Sunday the 12th. Well, look at this day, Sunday the 5th. It's blowing 35, 36 knots. That's today. Rough days, blowing east to the west. But let's take a little bit more manageable. Let's take this Sunday the 12th. And what you're doing is every single one of these days, you should be able to have a plan of attack if you happen to be that day you show up and this is your forecast. Sunday the 12th. And you rolled the, the, the dice and this is what you showed up with. So we've got uh, mid-teens to low-teens in the gust, low-teens to single-digit numbers, uh, winds blowing out of the southeast to the northwest, and the evening east to west conditions. Alright, so now you have a rough idea of which way the wind is blowing, how hard it's blowing, you have a little bit of sun, might get a little sprinkles, but no big deal. Then you go over to Google Maps, you go to the Google Earth options, Okay, and then you play the, all right, I show up on Sunday, March 12th, and these are the wind conditions I have to deal with. Where am I going to go fishing? And you're going to look on here, and I'm down towards Key West. I like to fish out of Geiger Key. I know that this area here is going to be sheltered by that wind because the wind is coming up from down there. What might be an actual better option is, since the wind is blowing from the southeast upwards, is not what it is doing? Yep. Those might opt for better conditions to be fishing on the Gulf side. Because the wind is going to be blowing up over the Keys, which is going to cut down the wind and create a lot more shelter spots. Now all these areas over here, where am I going to go fish? Where am I going to launch from? And you need to go through that on any random day and to help identify spots that you're going to fish with no different than if you were going to show up that day and you had to come up with a plan of attack and this is going to alleviate you coming up with all these preconceived spots you go there and the wind is blowing right in your face and it's choppy and it's windy it's dirty and you can't fish there and you go to another spot that you wanted to fish and again it's windy wind in your face and it's sloppy okay because you cannot fish where you want to fish. You have to fish where the wind allows you to fish. And that's the key to fishing down in the Florida Keys. So regardless of when you're coming, you should start practicing now. Jump on the um, wind finder, pick a random day, and then spend some time on the Google Maps, Google Earth, Navionics, and try to identify spots on where you would go, where you would launch from, and make it so that you're very efficient so regardless of the wind conditions you have a plan before you show up. Now I can't emphasize the importance of doing that kind of practice mode with the winds and locations to, to uh, fish. I guarantee you it will make or bake, break your trip based on if you do that or not. I get tons of questions. I know guys get a lot of questions. I know on the forums they get a lot of questions. People write, oh, I'm coming in 
six months, I'm coming in two months, I'm coming in a month from now, uh, what should I fish for, where should I fish? There is no answer, okay? My response would, and other people generally are, is you tell me what the winds are gonna be like when you show up, and I'll tell you where to go fish. And of course, you're gonna say, well, I don't know what the winds are gonna be, and that's gonna be my response too. Well, I don't know what to fish for if I don't know what the winds are, all right? That's kinda how it works. Everything is controlled by the winds down here, okay? It, it doesn't come down to what you want, it's what the wind allows. All right, one added piece that I would add to that, if you really want to get into it, and it is actually beneficial to have a, something hard copy tangible, is these uh, fishing maps. This is a top spot map. There's other brands that do it. Um, they have these broken down into the upper keys, middle keys, lower keys, so they're all sectioned out. And then they not only have the maps of the islands and the fishing areas, but they also put in uh, little hot, fishing hot spots, fishing tip locations. They're not gonna be the greatest. They're public information, so of course they're gonna get pounded. But at least they'll give you the gist of idea of areas that you should concentrate on. Then you can go on Google Earth and scout those areas out and see if they are some places that you might be interested in. All right? And then as you mark this map up, when you do show up, Maybe you don't have internet access. Maybe it's easier to just take a, lay this out, have your directionals and be able to get a shotgun approach instead of trying to look on a computer or your phone or something like that. Number two, hire a guide. Here is Charter Boat Row. These are all the big sports fisher boats. Now I know a lot of people just don't like the idea. Number one, because it's very expensive down here. Um, a moderate level half day trip, four to five hundred dollars plus tip and gratuities, all that, you're probably taxes, you're probably into it, five to $600 reasonable. You might find a $400 trip out there, they, they happen, low season, whatnot. It's expensive, but I would recommend it for this one reason, and it is to do like a light tackle, uh, flats boat, bay boat type, out to the back country, which is the, um, the north side islands, just along the ridge before you go out into the Gulf of Mexico. That's the back country. One, for me, it's the most scenic, most beautiful part about the Keys. Two, there's great fishing there and there's wide varieties of fish that are back there. Three is that you'll learn a lot of fishing techniques out there versus going and doing to the Atlantic where you might be doing some refishing, but you only do one style. You might go out to the blue water but you're learning only one t technique and it generally doesn't apply to any other type of fishing. Whereas if you go to the back country, I guarantee the guys will show you different fishing styles. And when you learn those, um, it'll help you out for your own individual trips, whether it be off of a bridge or on a kayak, shore fishing, your own boat, all right? You'll get to see the key type of fishing techniques that are utilized down here. And it'll make you a lot more efficient, a lot more effective and get you kind of that over that initial hump of, I don't know what I'm doing down here, all right? It, yeah, it's four or 500 up to $1,000 depending on the tour, but I mean, it, if you're coming down here and you're spending the money to, to be down here, I would say it's worthwhile to get a hold of that person that's gonna get you into fish initially, get your rod bent, you're gonna be happy, you're gonna learn a lot of stuff, and you're gonna start your trip off or end your trip off with a bang. And even though the rest of the time you might not catch anything, it takes that edge off. You're low stress, you caught a bunch of stuff, you got some videos, you got some photos, you got some food, all right? And it's well worth it to do that. These guys are very knowledgeable. It's what they do for a living, okay? They, they go fish the same areas, the same routines every single day so they know where the bait is. They know where the fish are. They know what the fish are biting, okay? And not only that, but they also have their fishing partners, their other fishing buddies that are out there hitting all the spots 
all up and down the Keys and there's a grapevine along the uh, fishing community and you get up to the minute information. They're always on their cell phones. They're listening on the radios, okay? And they're just pushing information on where's this, where's that? And you're almost guaranteed because that's what they're charging that much money for is for you to catch fish, all right? I would highly recommend it. I know it sucks about the money, but if you're coming down here, which is a very expensive place to do it, I would say suggest suck it up, put that as part of your budget, cut off other things, and then get that trip out of the way and you're gonna have so much more fun. You're gonna have guaranteed catching fish and more importantly, you're gonna learn a lot of new techniques that you can go on for the rest of your fishing trip and be able to utilize and catch more fish. Number three, don't plan on me, <laughs> okay? Uh, my priorities, me fishing and catching fish, normal life stuff, the YouTube fishing channel. I have about six boats that I rotate through and down here in the Keys, okay? And then if everything uh, lined up perfectly, possibly going out with other people just from randomly. And I can tell you that, um, to be honest with you, the people that I fish with on the channel that I post, pretty much all of them were I uh, met while I was out fishing. I met somebody out there, we talked, I found them interesting or to have the ability that it's worthwhile for me to go on a fishing trip with them and the circumstances worked out and then I would go out fishing with them. Uh, none of them have been on the contacting on basically just on the internet. Oh, I want to go fishing with you. Me, okay, let's go fishing, that kind of stuff. There's always been prerequisites beyond that. So it's just very difficult for me to dedicate any time towards doing that kind of thing. So that's why I always suggest hire a guide, okay? They're gonna block you your date in the calendar. You'll have that set. You can tell them exactly what you wanna do. They're gonna break, bend over backwards to make that happen and to make sure that you're happy for what you do. So, uh, although if you wanna do it yourself, just listen and learn and try to get as much involvement as you can. Throw questions at me on the uh, comments, throw it on my email, whatever, message me. And I always respond to all those as best as I can and give you as much detailed information. All my information things are full page ones if you've ever gotten one. Happy to do that, but uh, don't plan on me for any of your trip planning. Number four, watch last year's videos or fishing reports. I do that, okay? I use my videos as a fishing log. So I go through and you can look at the posted date on any video and I just look for last year's the same month, look at what I was catching and then I know what to expect, all right? You could do that the same thing with the fishing reports on any of the Keys Guides personal fishing reports and most of them are cyclable so you can go a year, two years, three, four, five years back. Just pick a month that you're gonna be down here Watch those videos, read those reports, and you'll have a good idea of roughly what's going to happen during that time frame. Number five, be flexible and have a backup plan. You show up today, Sunday the 5th, 30 to 35 knot winds, you ain't going fishing, all right? It's just not going to happen. Uh, you could possibly hire one of the 50-foot sportsmen for two, three thousand dollars and they might make it out to the patch reefs and perhaps you can catch some yellowtails. There'll be some very expensive yellowtails, but if that's what you're up to and you've got tons of money, there is an option. But in general, you're not going fishing. So have backup plans. If, that, if it's storming, raining, hurricane, well, what are you gonna do, okay? A lot of stuff to do in the Keys. Go down to Duval Street, go see the Keys deer in Big Pine, uh, go look at the bridges, Go to my adventure playlist on my YouTube channel and there's a bunch of different things, day trips that you can do, fun trips. Um, if it's really windy and you really can't get out, I have a couple of little creeks that you can paddle up that are sheltered by the trees that you can always get into regardless. But plan that as part of your trip, just bad day fishing days, these are things that we wanna do. You just wanna have options. Nothing's worse, it's just like I, I'm Kind of making this video about is never just show up and then try to start formulating a plan whether it be fishing or whatever 
you're paying a lot of money, it's expensive being down here, so you might as well maximize your time frame for why you are down here. Number six, adjust your fishing style to the local techniques. Now often I refer to the Keys as being a very difficult place to catch, okay? But on the other hand, it doesn't need to be if you kind of understand the local techniques that are utilized. Now the same fish have been caught the same way for many generations. So it's not a matter of inventing the wheel, it's just knowing what works. And um, we're talking people have been targeting these species for 50, 60 years the same way that we're doing today. And they do that because it's very effective. So the, the main thing that I can kind of give to you is that research that type of fishing that you're looking to do and then find out that common thread that you see everybody utilizing and adapt to that. All right. Especially, like I said, the guide reports will always give a lot of information about it. Fishing reports from people that are coming down here um, and catching fish. You'll see that there's a common thread on how to do it. For example, catching yellowtails on the reef. It's a matter of going up, finding a nice drop-off structure, current, anchoring up above that, putting out a lots of frozen chum, store-bought frozen chum, pushing a lot out. Okay, waiting a while, having your uh, spinning reel set up with a long, thin fluorocarbon leader, lightweight, with a very small hook, and then a cut plug of chunk, fresh chunk bait drifted back with the same speed as the chum. Easy enough, but if you're not used to that type of fishing, you might resort to, well, I'm more comfortable of drifting along and throwing a soft plastic and bouncing along the bottom. You can do that, but unfortunately, you're probably not going to catch very much. And it's not that it's not a good technique, it just doesn't fit the locale. So try to adjust your fishing style, kind of bite the bullet a little bit, open your eyes to what's being done in a certain area. Adapt to that, catch your fish, and then if you want to, once you've had your rod bend enough times or you've, that's worn off, then try out your technique and it might work good. You never know. But uh, anyways, adapt your style. Number seven, lower your expectations. Uh, especially because of the TV shows, it shows the keys as this dime a dozen catching all these trophy fish. But in real life, it's really not like that. Um, you need to understand, just like everything else on TV, it's a whole bunch of backside stuff going on in order to make this perfect little 20 minute sequence. Um, a lot of times down here, what will be is that the guides are going out, doing their with their clients, and they'll get on a tremendous bite, which is generally on the calendar because it's a seasonal pattern. Uh, everything starts lining up right, the bait is there, the current, wind, sun, all the conditions are perfect and they all let the TV shows, hey, this is going on right now, it's going crazy, come on down, guaranteed action. So the film crews will come down, they'll take them out and that golden moment, they'll catch a bunch of stuff, make a TV show about it, post it and then it makes it look like every day is this way in the Keys but it's not like that unless you have all those conditions already pre-lined up for you and it just doesn't happen that often with that. Um, again, going back to the guides being so um, incremental and to the success part of it, not only are they knowledgeable about that fishery, but they are day in and day out being involved in that so they know all those patterns and when things are gonna line up correctly for whatever species and that's where they're gonna take you. Whereas just going on your own, it's almost virtually impossible. So you're just basically going out in this vast ocean and trying to create something. So the best thing I suggest is just lower those standards a bit, okay? Keep your expectations in check. Uh, come out with an open mind and concentrate on just having the fun part of it. Getting some fish, you get a trophy in there, that's always great. Uh, but every day is not a TV day. Number eight. Okay, uh, kind of alludes to what I was talking about. We don't have a lot of tackle shops down here. 
Uh, so if you have any specialty equipment that you want to bring, uh, I would highly recommend you bring it with you, okay? One of the things I had to struggle with was trying to up my plastics game and try to be cool with everybody else than try to find the newest and greatest uh, soft plastics that are coming out now. But nobody carries them down here because we people don't use soft plastics or artificials very much. So you might have a section of gold products and then a couple of Z-Mans and a couple of uh, DOA Cal stuff. And that's it. You're talking a, a little box like that in the fishing capital of the U.S. And, and the world. And that's what you're going to find because it's just not utilized down here that much. So if you do have your certain things that you're wanting, a specific rod, if you're wanting a specific rail, line, leader, jigs, lures, whatever, um, and it means that much to you, make sure you bring it down because we don't have a lot of tackle resources. Number nine, budgets, money, double it. <laughs> That's the, it all kind of wraps up. Perfect example. Today's your first day in the Keys and you're ready to go fishing and you have the full plan of all day I'm gonna be out on the water, I'm just gonna be fishing, fishing, fishing. And then it's 35 knots out there and you're not going fishing, you're not getting on the water, what are you gonna do, all right? You gotta go do something, so you head on down to Duval Street, you go to a bar, you go down to a restaurant, you go do some sort of tourist activity, you do stuff. And what happens is it costs money. Very few things down here are free, so it costs money and you're spending money when you thought, well, that whole day I didn't plan on spending any money because I was going to be out fishing and it eats it up. Then on top of that, things down here are proportionally more expensive than you're going to find probably back home from wherever you come from. So that's expensive. No difference then you come down and you spend a three, four days and you haven't caught anything. And then you finally listen to me and you say, all right, screw this. I need to catch a fish, hire a guide. There's four or $500 to a thousand dollars that you weren't planning on it. Budget that in there. If you don't use it even better, but most likely you're going to use it. And number 10, a lot some time for fun fishing. Uh, even though you're coming down here with the grandiose thoughts of catching all the big trophy fish, fish out here, try to allot some time at the beginning or in the middle to just spend a day, maybe two days or an afternoon or something, just fun fishing. Uh, put out a chum bag and see how many species you catch. Go out uh, snapper fishing, go out, just something to bend a rod and have some fun. Um, why that's important is because you can get frustrated really quickly when you are only targeting certain species, certain sizes and so forth, and it gets very monotonous. Uh, if you're doing it professionally and you've been doing it a long time and you have no expectations other than a bunch of skunk days and you're totally fine with it, then of course no. But if you're coming down here for the fishing to learn the Keys experience, don't allot all your time for just a tarpon, just a sailfish, just a tuna, whatever. Try to just a day or two in the beginning for just fun fishing, go out, bend a rod, and look at all the different species that are available around here. Because what will happen a lot of times, that will be the funnest memories of your trip. Uh, just like anywhere else, going out and catching some bluegills can be just as fun as trophy bass fishing on the mainland and so forth. So uh, just for the fun of it, keep things fun try to do a little bit of a fun fishing because like I said, even though you may do two days of hardcore fishing, get skunked, you go do a day of fun fishing, relieve some stress, get some to the boat, have some fun out there. And then when you go back to that trophy hunting, you're refreshed and you're okay, you've caught stuff and the pressure's off and then you could focus on what you need to do to catch those bigger fish. So those are my 10 tips for prepping down here in the Florida Keys. Um, I guess that's the biggest, all of them are pretty solid tips, I think. A lot of it just kinds of lower your expectations, focus on having fun, all right? And there's a lot of preparations that you can do so that you can have a successful trip while you're down there. So anyways, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.
if this wind ever stops, 